Hi, my name is Georgia. And I'm Emma. And we will be your guides for today. But firstly, let us thank you for buying one of our Studfast stud welding equipments and also welcome you to our new online video demonstration where we will be your guides, walking you through the setting up and the use of the equipment. We will answer your technical questions, show you exactly what the machine can do and provide advice on what to look for in a good or bad weld. We're going to get you set up fast, but there will also be some behind the scenes techno stuff for all of you boffins out there. I see you have unpacked the box already, so let's start by identifying the components of the package you have bought. Here we have the controller. This controller is one of the lightest, most compact and more advanced controllers. Inside there are all of the capacitors which give you the energy for the weld. On the front, we have the terminals for the hand tool and the earth connections, the power selector and the digital display. All very simple and easy to use. This light and well-balanced hand tool is essentially the business end of the whole machine. This is what the operator will be using all the time. The well-designed tool minimises operator fatigue, but provides a solid and durable tool for everyday use. Here are the dual earth leads used for earthing the workpiece during welding. These could be substituted for toggle clamps at some point in the future when in production. When you bought the package, you would have received five free chucks. Later on, I will show you how to correctly set a chuck and how to know when to change it. Chucks are consumables and wear out. This is the chuck securing key. It is used to secure the chuck into the hand tool that we saw earlier. These last items complete the standard package. You are almost ready to go now, just a few more things that we need to cover. Well, this may be obvious, but you need to connect all of those cables to the controller. The hand tool is plugged in here with the four pin control cable plug. Locate it in the socket and rotate until secure. And the hand tool weld cable goes in here. Push in and twist. The earth cable is connected here. Push and twist. Now, this is very important. All of these connections must be tight. If they are loose, you will lose weld energy. This will burn the connectors, leading to an expensive repair bill and poor welds. Next, select the stud that you want to weld and a new chuck of the correct size. You need to ensure the stud is a nice tight fit in the chuck. If it is loose, it will arc on the stud during welding and you will lose valuable weld energy. To set the chuck, wind out the backstop until the stud can be pushed all the way into the chuck, until the back of the flange touches the front of the chuck. Now wind the backstop back in until there is a one millimetre gap between the flange and the front of the chuck. Lock the backstop. Slide the chuck into the hand tool. Then nip it in with the chuck key provided. Note, don't do it up too tight as it may damage the hand tool. Now you are ready to plug in the mains cable and turn on the controller using the switch on the back. Workpiece on the bench, connect both earth leads. Again, ensure these are tight, you don't want these burning out either. The earth clamps should be positioned as far apart as possible on the workpiece. Earthing should be balanced. Also, if the earths are placed too close to the weld position, you can get what is called arc blow. This is where the molten metal of the weld is pushed and pulled away from the earth position by magnetic forces. We are almost there now. You need the correct amount of energy in the weld. In the manual, you will find a series of tables. These give the recommended voltage and spring pressure for the size of the studs to be welded. In this case, we are welding an M6 mild steel stud to sheet mild steel. The manual indicates a voltage of 135 volts, so just turn the voltage dial until 135 volts is shown on the digital display. The same table also shows the recommended spring pressure for the hand tool. May I borrow a pound for this part, please? Insert the pound into the slot at the back of the hand tool and turn it until the correct spring pressure is indicated on the scale underneath, in this case, three. Okay, now we are ready. Or are we? Just to recap, 
connect hand tool, connect earths, set the chuck, select the voltage, set the spring pressure. Now place the hand tool on the workpiece, press down to take up the spring pressure. Ready? Keep the hand tool square to the workpiece and pull the trigger. Now, let's see that in an instant replay. Here comes the science. When the voltage is selected, the capacitors are charged up. Pulling the trigger releases the energy, which passes through the cables into the hand tool, through the chuck, and to the pip on the end of the stud, which vaporizes. The molten metal radiates outwards towards the edge of the flange. Finally, the spring in the hand tool pushes the stud into the molten pool. can be removed from the welded stud. Ensure the hand tool is removed vertically to avoid opening the chuck. Right, so how do I know that I have a good weld? There are several ways of telling if you have a good weld. You could just hit it with a hammer, but that is a bit unsophisticated. Firstly, look at the weld. You want to see a witness of molten metal all the way around the flange. Secondly, you could use the torque method with one of our Studfast torque testing bars, which once set will click over the safe tightening torque. How do I get the weld stud positioned correctly on the workpiece? There are several ways of doing this. Lining up on scribe lines, locating the pip in the centre dot, but the best method by far is the use of templates and the template adapter. Attach a template adapter to the hand tool and the studs can be positioned accurately. Some people prefer to use centre dot marks. This is not really recommended. Why is that? Well, the most critical part of the whole weld process is the pip on the end of the stud. Essentially, this pip contains all of the weld material and is also a timing device. Remember, the molten metal needs to travel to the outside of the flange and this takes place in a given time. If the pip is buried in the centre dot mark, the timing of the weld is thrown out and some of the material is lost, so it cannot form a good weld. Centre dots of a consistent depth may be used. These should be done with an automatic centre punch. If used, the settings in the manual may need to be adjusted. Going back to templates, advice on the manufacture of templates is available from our office, but essentially they can be manufactured from tofnel or sheet metal. They should be spaced away from the workpiece to allow venting of gases and weld spatter. A thicker template will assist in keeping the hand tool vertical. Before we close, there are a few other things I would briefly like to cover. Studfast have another important positioning tool, the offset. This moves the chuck to one side, allowing you to weld studs close to an upright. We don't just supply the machines, we supply the whole package. Studs, chucks, equipment and accessories. What you should remember is this. Studs with inconsistent pips and flanges mean bad welds. Our studs are closely controlled and provide great welds every time. We don't just want to sell you this stud welding machine and move on. We want your business for the life of your product. And we want to supply you with all of the items necessary to give you good welds. That is the machine, the accessories and the studs. This way, any problems can be easily analysed and corrected. Finally, before we go, if you get to a point where you need greater productivity or accuracy, we can also offer a variety of semi-automatic, fully automatic and full CNC stud welding equipment. If you would like these details, they are available from our website or one of our representatives can come along to you to discuss what you have in mind. I do hope we have answered all of your questions regarding your new stud welder. Should you have any queries, please contact our sales office on 01604 790 901. Can I have my pound back now, please?